Fanconi anemia, a rare disease named after its discoverer, Swiss pediatrician Guido Fanconi. Fanconi anemia is a DNA repair disorder which leads to bone marrow failure and cancer. Patients have an inability to repair damage in their DNA, which leads to a variety of health issues. Most significantly, patients have a risk that is up to 700 times higher than that of the average population to develop oral cancer. Such an increased risk of cancer is a huge challenge for patients and their treating physicians. Oinika Feloya is a senior physician for children and adolescents and an expert in Fanconi anemia. She regularly examines patients for malignant tumors of the oral cavity. These so-called squamous cell carcinomas are particularly aggressive in Fanconi anemia patients and can occur in adults and in young adolescents. Oral cancer itself is relatively easy to spot. It looks pretty nasty. But importantly, in Fanconi anemia patients, these oral cancers mostly arise from changes that look harmless. That means that these seemingly harmless spots may actually be precursor lesions, and they are very important to detect. If such precursor lesions are recognized at an early stage, surgical removal is sufficient to treat the cancer and surgical removal is the safest option to control the oral cancer as Fanconi anemia patients do not tolerate traditional chemotherapy because of the underlying DNA repair problem. Precursor lesions can have all kinds of appearances. They can be white, they can be red, they can bleed. In the context of Fanconi anemia, everything that doesn't look normal and doesn't heal or go away after three weeks should be checked by a physician. If the oral mucosa is abnormal, a checkup should always be carried out as soon as possible. If the lesions are harmless, waiting three months to inspect again is sufficient. If the oral mucosa is normal, a doctor should perform an examination every six months. In addition, patients are advised to examine their oral cavity once a week. A professional examination of the oral mucosa does not always require a specialist. A dentist, a physician for ear, nose and throat, or an oral and maxillofacial surgeon can perform the exam as well. In the past, the biggest problem was that this is not a typical cancer in young patients, and that's why these tumors have often been detected too late. Moreover, in the past, we didn't investigate these precursor lesions well enough. That means they were misinterpreted. A misinterpretation cannot be afforded in patients with Fanconi anemia. Here, all precursor lesions should be examined for cancer cells. So far, this has been done with a traditional incisional biopsy. This is a relatively painful procedure for the patient. You need local anesthesia and then a piece of the oral mucosa is removed. Sometimes stitches are needed. So altogether, the patient needs a week until everything is healed. In the past, detection happened after these traditional incisional biopsies. That was a very big burden for these patients. That's why we started looking for non-invasive alternatives. And this is what it looks like. The alternative to a traditional incisional biopsy in early cancer detection. With this brush, lesions occurring in the oral cavity can be investigated very early and very easily. The cells of the superficial oral mucosa are collected with the brush. Afterwards, a cytopathologist in the lab looks under the microscope and can see if there are already cellular changes that are typical in cancer development. In the practical implementation, the brush screening depends on a structured and rigorous approach. If the physician detects a lesion during an oral examination, its details need to be documented. A special mouth map is available for this purpose. Not only is the position of the mucosal change documented, but also its shape, color, and texture. 
In addition, photo documentation is essential. This can be carried out with a special camera or simply with a mobile phone. This allows changes to the lesion to be tracked easily. Next, the brush comes into play. To be more precise, two brushes are used. With approximately 15 circular motions, the lesion is brushed with the first brush. Then the process is repeated with the second brush. Afterwards, both brushes are placed in a container with fixation fluid and rubbed against each other. The cell components in the brushes loosen and move over into the fixation fluid. Now, they are preserved until the cytopathological examination. The container must be labeled in the same way as the documentation on the oral map. This ensures the exact assignment of the cell samples to the individual lesions. Now, this procedure is repeated for every change in the mucosa until all lesions are brushed. In the large study that we carried out, we were able to show that this brush biopsy method has very high diagnostic accuracy. That means one can very precisely determine whether a lesion is dangerous or not. The use of a brush to obtain cell material is not new, though using this method to investigate tissue changes in the oral cavity is new. The research team from the University of Dusseldorf and the German Fanconi Anemia Support Group examined 713 Fanconi Anemia patients over a period of 12 years. The result? From a diagnostic point of view, the brush biopsy is absolutely reliable. Moreover, 83% of the examined lesions investigated in the study were found to be benign. Only 17% were classified as malignant. Such lesions must still be investigated with an incisional biopsy. This is very important. The brush biopsy method is a screening process to reduce the number of unnecessary incisional biopsies. But if you get a positive result or an ambiguous finding, an incisional biopsy should always be performed. Although incisional biopsies of malignant lesions are still necessary, the brush biopsy method reduces the number of painful tissue samples by 75% according to the study. For the patient, this is a great relief, and it motivates them to participate in more regular checkups. The goal is to apply this screening method in the routine care of Fanconi anemia patients. Every lesion that is detected should be brushed. In Germany, this method is covered by health insurance. Most importantly, it offers patients high certainty. Is this lesion dangerous or not? The brush biopsy can be used as an additional tool in early detection. A detailed description can be found on our website. The material required, such as the brush biopsy kit and the oral map, can easily be ordered and downloaded online. This methodology has scientific components, including certainty in the care of the patients. But there is also a human component, it is very important that we achieve a better quality of life for the patients with this brush so that fewer incisional biopsies are performed and that patients are safe. Safety is important, knowing whether you have cancer or not. For Fanconi anemia patients, this information is life-saving. And in this context, the brush biopsy is a valuable add-on to early cancer detection.